Hi there, and welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to automatically delete the temporary files created by the plotting process in your plotting scripts so that if you have a bunch of plots queued up and you cancel one of them out, it will automatically delete these files and then your temporary drive will not be filled up with stale uh, plotting processes temp files. For example, if I decide to cancel this pl plotting process right here um, in Task Manager, I decide to end the task because maybe it's frozen or I don't need that many plots. You can see that another one is started, however the old plotting uh, temp files still remain. And these extra temporary files left over may prematurely fill up my plotting drive and not allow for the maximum number of parallel plots that I normally would be able to do. So how can we have PowerShell automatically delete these temporary files for a process that either was cancelled or errors out? Well. If you look at the name of the file, it looks like gibberish, but you can see a pattern. So all these files have the same random string right here, and this random string is actually the uh, plot ID. So if we go to one of these log files and we open it up, we can see that one of the first things that it writes to the log file is the ID number of the plot. So we can grab this ID number for the plotting process and then use it to delete the temporary files that have it in the name whenever the plotting process either gets canceled or has an exit error code. So the current plotting process that's going on right here is logging to this file and we need to extract this string right here and we can do that using PowerShell. So we're going to use the command get content and then we're going to supply it with the path to that log file and then it will grab all the strings in that file and then we can pipe those strings to select string to filter out the one that we want. So we're going to use a simple match and then we're basically saying you know if the string starts with the characters ID, colon, and a space well then grab it and ignore the rest. Now you would think that select string would output a string but it actually outputs a match object. So we need to pipe that to a for each object to run a command on it. So the dollar sign underscore is the current object in the pipeline or that match object object. And then we're going to run the method to string to, to grab the string that we filtered out. And then we're going to split that string into two um, different strings and we're going to split it where there's a space. So if we open up the log file, we're basically going to split it right here so that we get everything afterwards. Now it puts it into an array and array starts with zero. So we're going to do the number one uh, in the array. So if we click enter right here, you can see that we get exactly what we want, which is the ID. Now I probably should have stored that ID in a variable, so let me go ahead and run that command again, but stored in a variable called plot ID. Now yet let's use this to grab all the temporary files that have that string in the name of the file. Now we can do this easily by using the command get child item. So get child item basically grabs all the files and folders within a directory. So we're going to supply it with the path of our temporary directory. So mine was at p plot, and then we're going to use the filter parameter to basically only select the files with the file name that has our plot ID. Now we're going to start our filter with double quotes, and we don't really care what the file name starts with. So we're going to do the wildcard asterisk, but we do want to make sure that the plot ID is in the file name and we don't really care the characters after the plot ID so we're going to do another wildcard or an asterisk but we do want to just grab temporary files so we're going to do .tmp afterwards so if we close out those double quotes and we hit enter you can see that it grabs all the temporary files with our plot ID so let's go ahead and integrate everything we just learned into our script file. Now this script file comes from uh, this video, so if you want to learn more about how I created it, you can watch that video. Um, I'll also link a card above. Now basically what the script does is it starts the Chia process and it stores that process in the variable Chia process. Now it's very important to use this pass-through um, switch, and if you don't use that, then this will not work. So we're basically up updating the progress by using a while loop. So we're saying like while the process is still going or has not exited it, uh, get the progress of it and then display it to PowerShell. Now we're just adding this line right here which is what we ran earlier. So we're giving it the log path and we're selecting the ID from that log um, file. 
Now once we have that and then the process has been ended, the while loop will be broken and then it will go down to the next command. So now we're checking what was the exit code of the process. Now a zero exit code generally speaking is always means that the process completed successfully. So anything other than zero, something went wrong. So even if you killed it in task manager, it'll probably result in negative one or just a different number. So if the process does not equal zero, then it ended incorrectly. So we're gonna do the get child item. This is the same command that we ran earlier and get all the temp files with the plot ID. And then we're gonna remove those items and then just do a force uh, switch just for good measure. Now this won't even send it to your recycling bin. It'll just delete them entirely. So let's go ahead and run the script to see if it works as expected. So I'm just doing start chia plotting and the temporary uh, directory is going to be my pplot. So if I click enter, you can see that the plotting process has started and the process ID is 24088. Let's go to the temporary directory. We have, let's just look at the first few, so E74, and then let's cancel this plotting process. So if I right click and task, you can see that this will stop and then all those files got deleted and now the temporary uh, directory is filled up with the new plotting temp files. Now if we go ahead and do that again, I'm going to end the task. You can see this will go from 2 to 3 and then these files will be deleted and we won't have to worry about our temporary uh, drive filling up with uh, stale temp files. And if we check our recycling bin, you can see that they don't get thrown in your recycling bin, so you don't even have to worry about emptying that out. Now let's go ahead and end the last task as well, and we'll see that the temporary directory just becomes completely empty. And you can see that all the files got deleted. Now you will be able to access the scripts that we used in this video on my GitHub, and I'll link this in the description. However, I will be updating the actual functions in the PSG Plotter module. So if you're using the functions, this should already be added by the time this video is released. Now, if you already have a plotting script that you created and customized and you're just planning on adding this into it, I do want to kind of just give you a quick overview of something to watch out for. So let me go ahead and clear the screen. And basically what I want to show you is the way that you get the process object stored in the variable, for instance, Right here I have the variable chia process that stores the chia process object from start process. Now, if you do this a different way, it, this property right here, exit code, will not get updated when the process uh, gets canceled or ends. So let me go ahead and just show you what I'm talking about. So if we start a process, let's start the notepad process. We're gonna wanna use the pass-through parameter to generate the object. And then we grab the ID to grab the process and store it in a variable. So let's just store it in a variable called notepad, get process ID, that process ID, and then let's go ahead and exit out of this process. Now, if we try to get the exit code, you can see that it does not output anything. It's null and not zero. Now, if we do the same thing, but we store this original object that gets uh, created, when we run start process, we'll get a different result. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's store it into a, the same variable. Let's do start process, and let's exit out of it right here, and then run the same thing. And here you can see that we get zero because it exited out normally. So I would just be careful and make sure that you always store the original object into the variable. Now I don't exactly know why this is, but this is just a warning to avoid this. Now if we do the same thing again, start process, and then this time let's go ahead and do a stop process. I think we can do input object and do this. And now we do the exit code. You can see that it's not zero because we kind of forced it to stop and it didn't stop naturally. So that's why it's negative one which is what we're checking here in the script, you know, making sure that it's not zero. So I hope this video was helpful and I hope that you're able to integrate this in your script or that you enjoyed this uh, feature update and the scripts that I provided. Um, now you can also get the temp size, you know, using this method as well, since now we can get the, all the files 
uh, that the process is running or creating. So that's also another benefit, but I would just keep this video short and uh, let you play around with it in your scripts. All right, bye.